We've taken a look back at some of the top recruits from certain programs over the years. I feel like we should take a look back at arguably one of the most dominant teams from the past decade, Clemson. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 recruits in Clemson football history. As always, these rankings are a courtesy of the 24-7 Sports Composite Rankings. Before we get to today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so you never miss another video. If you love college football content, then this is definitely the place for you. But before we get to today's video, I'd like to take a second and thank the sponsor of this video, Manscaped. Now, for those of you longtime viewers of the channel, you know that I'm a huge fan of Manscaped and all their products. Gentlemen, I know we focus so much on taking care of our bodies, but don't forget about your most prized possessions down there. They deserve to feel loved too. If you head over to the website, you can get all kinds of different things to help polish your trophy. Now, if you want the most bang for your buck, my personal favorite is the performance package. With this, you'll get my personal favorite item, the Weed Whacker. Now, I have a solid amount of nose hair, and for years, I've had to resort to plucking them out myself. Well, not anymore. Guys, did you know that 79% of partners that were polled admitted that long nose hair is a major turnoff? Well, the Weed Whacker uses a powerful 9000 RPM motor with a 360 degree rotary dual blade system to safely whack your weeds. It's water resistant, which makes for easy wet or dry operation and easy cleaning. Plus, it's the only nose hair trimmer on the market that's cordless and has a rechargeable battery that lasts up to 90 minutes. In addition, you'll also receive the Lawnmower 3.0 that will also help keep your team clean, smooth and ready for the big game. You'll also receive the Crop Preserver, Crop Reviver, and the Magic Mat. Now, if you order all this right now, Manscaped has also allowed me to throw in a free shed travel bag to keep all of your items in on the go. Plus, a free pair of anti-chafing boxers. Consider this my personal gift to you guys. If you go to manscaped.com and enter the promo code HIGHLIGHTS, you'll get 20% off plus free shipping. Again, that's promo code HIGHLIGHTS to receive 20% off your entire order plus free shipping. Also, did you guys know that every hour, one man is diagnosed with testicular cancer? April is officially National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, and Manscaped and I want to bring more awareness to this issue. For men between the ages of 15 and 35, which is a large portion of my audience, testicular cancer is the most common form of cancer found in men. In addition to providing the right tools and solutions for safe and easy manscaping, Manscaped has partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to spread awareness for men's health and early cancer cancer detection. So not only is Manscaped helping you look good and feel good, but they're helping bring awareness to a more serious matter. For more information on how you can save balls, check out manscaped.com TCS. And together, we can save some balls. Before we get to the top 10, I want to show a few names who would have cracked this list, but are very recent recruits with either no experience yet with the Tigers or only one year, which isn't enough time to take a look at how their careers panned out. A few years down the line, they'll officially be added to this list. All right, now let's get to this top 10. Kicking off the list at number 10 is 2015 recruit Dion Kane, who had a rating of 9906. He attended Tampa Bay Technical High School in Florida, where he truly did it all for his team. During his senior season, he had 1,900 rushing yards with 19 rushing touchdowns, along with five passing touchdowns. When he arrived at Clemson, he was converted to a wide receiver. He had a pretty solid freshman campaign as he caught 34 passes for 600 yards and five touchdowns. His 17.1 yards per catch was the best on the team, and the five touchdowns were the third most. During his sophomore season, he had 38 catches for 700 yards with nine touchdowns. His nine touchdowns were the second most on the team, and he averaged a team best 19 yards per catch. Kane was named third team All ACC during his junior season. He had 58 catches for over 700 yards with six touchdowns. He declared for the NFL draft after his junior season. Currently, he ranks 20th all time in Clemson history with 130 catches, 14th all time with 2,040 receiving yards, and 5th all time with 20 receiving touchdowns. Kane was drafted by the Indianapolis Colts in the 6th round of the 2018 NFL Draft, but in his first preseason game, he suffered a torn ACL, ending his rookie season. He returned in 2019, but saw very little time on the field with the Colts before being waived. He was then picked up by the Steelers, where he caught 5 passes for 72 yards in 6 games with them. He was waived by Pittsburgh in September of 2020, but was signed to the practice squad. He saw action on the field, but only for one game and didn't receive a target. In January of 2021, he signed a reserve futures contract with the Ravens. Up next at number 9 is 2011 recruit Sammy Watkins, who had a rating of 99.06. He attended South Fort Myers High School in Florida. 
He became the all-time leading receiver in the history of Lee County with 133 catches for 3,000 yards and 36 touchdowns. He was one of the top wide receiver recruits in the country and ultimately chose Clemson. He immediately put his name on the map during his freshman season as he caught 82 passes for 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns. He led the nation in reception yards per game, all-purpose yards, and touchdowns. He broke 11 school freshman records seven games into the season. He was an AP First Team All-American, becoming only the fourth ever true freshman to do so. As a sophomore, he had 57 catches for 700 yards and three touchdowns. Then as a junior, he had 100 catches for 1,400 yards and 12 touchdowns. He was the MVP of the Orange Bowl after setting an Orange Bowl record with 16 catches for 227 yards. Following his junior campaign, he announced that he'd declare early for the NFL Draft. He sits near the top of the record books in every Clemson category. He's second in Tiger history with 240 catches, first with 3,400 receiving yards, and tied for first with 27 receiving touchdowns. Watkins was selected fourth overall by the Buffalo Bills in the 2014 NFL Draft. During his NFL career, he spent time with the Bills, the Rams, and the Chiefs. Through his seven-year career, he's appeared in 86 games and has caught 321 passes for 4,700 yards and 33 touchdowns. His best season came back in 2015 when he caught 60 passes for over 1,000 yards and 9 touchdowns. Watkins was really good during his first two seasons in the NFL, but just hasn't really lived up to the hype since. He's still had a solid NFL career, but not one you'd expect out of the number 4 overall pick. Up next at number 8, we have another 2011 recruit, this one being Tony Stewart, who had a rating of 99.17. He attended St. Augustine Menendez High School in Florida. He won the high school version of the Dick Buckus Award in 2010 as the best linebacker in the country. During his time with the Tigers, he racked up 102 total tackles with 13 coming for loss and 4 sacks. He was drafted by the Buffalo Bills in the 6th round of the 2015 NFL Draft. He spent time with the Bills, Patriots, and the Saints, but was never more than just a practice squad player. He was out of the NFL in 2016. Coming in at number 7 is 2006 recruit CJ Spiller, who had a rating of 99-19. He attended Union County High School in Florida. During his senior season, he had nearly 2,000 rushing yards with 30 rushing touchdowns. He went on to have one of the best careers by a running back in Clemson history. As a true freshman, he rushed for just under 1,000 yards with 10 rushing touchdowns. Over his next two seasons, his numbers declined as he rushed for a combined 1,400 yards with 10 rushing touchdowns. He returned for his senior season instead of declaring for the NFL Draft. Now, it was a good call as he submitted himself as one of the best running backs of the decade in college football. He also became one of five players to ever gain 7,000 all-purpose yards. He was one of three finalists for the 2009 Doak Walker Award and was sixth in voting for the Heisman Trophy. He was selected for the All-ACC First Team and was voted the ACC Player of the Year. He was the nation's only player that season to account for touchdowns five different ways, rushing, passing, receiving, and kick and punt returns. And he had a passing, rushing, and receiving touchdown in one game, being the first player in Clemson history to ever do so. He finished his Clemson career with 3,500 rushing yards and 32 rushing touchdowns. He had 120 catches for 1,400 receiving yards with 11 receiving touchdowns, and 2,600 total return yards with 8 return touchdown. Spiller was selected ninth overall by the Buffalo Bills in the 2010 NFL Draft. He spent the first five seasons of his career in Buffalo and was pretty solid. His best year was in 2012 when he rushed for over 1,200 yards with six rushing touchdowns while adding more than 40 catches for 500 yards in the passing game. After Buffalo though, he spent time with the Saints, Seahawks, Jets, and Chiefs. He appeared in one game in 2017, but that would be it for his career. He finished his time in the NFL with 3,500 rushing yards, 12 rushing touchdowns, 198 catches, 1,500 receiving yards, and 9 receiving touchdowns. He's currently part of the Clemson coaching staff. Up next at number 6 is 2018 recruit KJ Henry, who had a rating of 99-28. He attended West Forsyth High School in North Carolina. He was one of the top recruits in the nation and the number two overall recruit in the state. The defensive end played only a handful of snaps during his freshman season for the Tigers, as he racked up six total tackles. In 2019, he saw more action, totaling 22 tackles, with four and a half coming for loss. This past season, he totaled 23 tackles, with six coming for loss and three and a half sacks. He also added two pass breakups and a fumble recovery. He'll return to Clemson in 2021 for his senior campaign. Before we get to the top five, if you could please take a second and give this video a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. It really does help share the video with more college football fans, and it only takes a second to do. Number five on our list takes us back a ways, as we have 2001 recruit Roscoe Crosby, who had a rating of 99.78. 
He was one of the top wide receivers in the nation and was named the best player in the state of South Carolina. He excelled in both baseball and football and ultimately ended up having an offer from the Royals to play professional baseball. During his freshman year at Clemson, he caught 23 passes for 400 yards and 3 touchdowns. However, during his time there, he dealt with numerous injuries along with a lot of personal tragedy in his life. He'd end up only playing one year at Clemson and that would be the end of his college football career. Now it looks like he's doing great and has his life on track. According to his LinkedIn page, he's a high school advisor in South Carolina. Number 4 on this list is 2018 recruit Xavier Thomas, who had a rating of 99.88. He attended the IMG Academy where he was a top 3 recruit in the country, including the number 1 overall defensive end. He made an immediate impact for Clemson during his freshman season. He had 43 tackles with 10.5 coming for loss and 3.5 sacks. He was a freshman All-American by nearly every outlet imaginable. He was a third team All-ACC during his sophomore year as he finished with 31 tackles, including 8 for loss and 2 sacks. Originally, his plan was to play only 4 games in 2020 and redshirt after complications with COVID and strep throat, but he ended up playing in 7 games thanks to the NCAA rule allowing him an extra year of eligibility. He finished with 11 tackles with 4 tackles for loss and 3.5 and sacks and a forced fumble. He'll return to the Tigers in 2021. Before we get to the top 3, drop a comment down below and try to guess who the top 3 recruits are in Clemson history. Number 3 on the list goes the 2016 recruit Dexter Lawrence, who had a rating of 99-92. He attended Wake Forest High School in North Carolina. By many outlets, he was considered the number one prospect in the country. As a senior in high school, he had 91 tackles with 21 tackles for loss, 13 sacks, and 16 quarterback hurries. For his career, he had 204 tackles, 65 tackles for loss, and 28 sacks. His career with the Tigers got off to a hot start as he was named a freshman All-American by ESPN and USA Today and was named the ACC Defensive Rookie of the Year by the media and the coaches. He finished with 79 tackles and broke the Clemson freshman record with 7 sacks while also having 9.5 tackles for loss. He produced 23 quarterback pressures, the second highest on the team, and also had 2 recovered fumbles and 2 block kicks. During his sophomore season, he was one of 18 semifinalists for the Bednarik Award. He had 39 tackles, 3 tackles for loss, 2.5 sacks, 5 quarterback pressures, a pass breakup, and a forced fumble. He was named first team All-ACC during his junior season, where he had 44 tackles with 7.5 for loss, 3 pass breakups, a fumble recovery, a block kick, and even a rushing touchdown. After his junior campaign, he declared for the NFL Draft where he was selected with the 17th overall pick by the New York Giants. In two seasons in New York, he's made 31 starts and has racked up 91 tackles with 6.5 sacks and 19 quarterback hits. Number 2 on this list goes to 2008 recruit Daquan Bowers, who had a rating of 99-97. He attended Bamberg Earhart High School in South Carolina. As a senior in 2007, he recorded 97 tackles with 33 tackles for loss and 14 sacks. He also added 1,200 rushing yards and 19 rushing touchdowns on offense as well. He was ranked as the number one overall prospect in the country and was the first Clemson recruit in history to be ranked as the top player in the nation by any recruiting service. During his freshman campaign, he had 47 tackles, the most among Tiger defensive linemen. He also averaged a tackle every 10.2 snaps, the second best in the country. He recorded 46 tackles during his sophomore season with 10.5 coming for loss and 3.5 sacks. He then went on to have a historically good season in 2010. He finished the season with 67 tackles, including 26 tackles for loss and 15 and a half sacks. He was a consensus All-American and was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, the Bronco Nagurski Award winner, and the Ted Hendricks Award winner. Bowers was selected with the 51st overall pick in the 2011 NFL Draft by the Buccaneers. He was selected lower than expected due to medical issues, including off-season knee surgery. He played in 16 games his rookie season, finishing with 25 tackles with 10 tackles for loss. Throughout his career though, he dealt with injuries and run-ins with the law. He'd be with the Buccaneers through 2015, where he finished with 69 total tackles and 18 tackles for loss. In May of 2017, he signed with the Edmonton Eskimos of the CFL, but a year later, he announced his retirement from football. Following his retirement from the game, he joined the football staff at Clemson as a student assistant working with the defensive line while finishing his degree. Then, in 2020, Bowers was named the defensive line coach at South Florida. Coming in at number one though on this list is one of the highest rated recruits in college football history, Trevor Lawrence, who in 2018 had a near perfect rating of 99-99. He attended Cartersville High School in Georgia. Aside from being one of the highest recruits of all time, he was named the USA Today National Offensive Player of the Year, the US Army Player of the Year, and was named the Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Georgia as a junior and a senior. 
He went 52-2 as a starter during his career, including a 41-game winning streak and a 14-2 record in the playoffs. He led his team to four region titles and two state titles. During his high school career, he threw for 14,000 yards with 161 passing touchdowns and only 21 interceptions. He set state records for passing yards and passing touchdowns that were previously held by former Clemson Tiger Deshaun Watson. Originally, Trevor Lawrence sat as the number two quarterback on the depth chart behind Kelly Bryant, but four games into the season, Lawrence was named the starter and the rest was history. He led the Tigers to an ACC championship and a college football national championship. On the season, he threw for 3,300 yards with 30 passing touchdowns and was named the National Freshman of the Year and the Archie Griffin Award by the Touchdown Club of Columbus. He was also named the ACC Rookie of the Year. Lawrence brought Clemson back to the championship game during his sophomore year, but came up short against a historically good LSU team. He threw for 3,700 yards with 36 passing touchdowns and 9 rushing touchdowns with over 500 rushing yards. During his junior season, he threw for 3,200 yards with 24 passing touchdowns while adding 8 rushing touchdowns. Yet again, he led Clemson to the playoffs, but didn't get a chance to appear in his third straight national championship, and he finished second in Heisman Trophy voting. He leaves Clemson third all-time in passing yards and second all-time in passing touchdowns. Had he returned for his senior season, or not missed a few games last season, or any games during his freshman season, he likely would have shattered both of those records. Trevor Lawrence, in all likelihood, is going to be the first overall pick in the upcoming NFL Draft. Well, that wraps up today's video. Which player on this list were you shocked to see, and who do you think was the biggest bust? Drop a comment down below and share with me your thoughts. If you haven't done so yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so you don't miss another video. If you love cultural ball content, then this is definitely the place for you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.